Hi Bobcats, in this video we're going to see how you write and balance equations for nuclear reactions. Our objective is to write balanced equations for nuclear decay and other reactions as well. The concept behind writing these nuclear equations is that the mass numbers and the atomic numbers have to balance between the reactant side and the product side. So you'll look at all of the chemicals that are present on the reactant side and you'll add up their mass numbers. You'll look at all of the chemicals that are present on the product side and you'll add up their mass numbers. And those sums from the left side and the right side should be equal. What I just said for the mass numbers, we're going to do the exact same thing for the atomic numbers. Typically in these problems, you'll be given all of the species that are present except for one. You'll use the, um, the sums of the mass numbers and the atomic numbers to figure out the mass number and atomic number for the missing piece. And once you know the atomic number for the missing piece, you can go to the periodic table and see what the identity of that element is and look up its symbol. Here are a couple of examples um, where we're going to complete these equations and balance them. In the first one, we have a uranium atom being bombarded by a neutron to make a samarium plus a zinc, and we're trying to figure out how many neutrons are left over. Okay, so in the left-hand side on the top, if we add up the uh, mass numbers, we have a 235 plus 1, so the top adds up to 236 on the left-hand side. Over on the right-hand side, we have 160 plus 72. So 160 plus 72 gives us 232. That's for the samarium plus the zinc. And it needs to equal 236, so we need four more. So we're going to put a coefficient of four in front of the neutrons. Four times one gives us four. So if we add that four to the 232, we get that total of 236. Now let's just double check that the atomic numbers, the ones on the bottom add up. On the left-hand side, we have 92 plus zero, which is a 92 down for the bottom number. And on the right-hand side, we have 62 plus 30 plus four times zero, which is 92 as well. So the atomic numbers balance as well as the mass numbers. Let's look at another example. We have a plutonium isotope getting hit with a, a neutron, and that's going to make a cerium isotope plus some missing piece we need to find plus two neutrons. So on the left-hand side, when we add up the mass numbers, we have 239 plus 1, which is 240. And when we add up the atomic numbers, we have 94 plus 0, which is 94. So those are our sums on the left. Over here on the right, we're going to have on the mass numbers 144 plus 2 times 1, or 146 on the top. And down on the bottom, we're going to have 58 plus 2 times 0, which is 58. So now to find our missing piece. Um, basically, if we want to write it out as an equation, we're going to have 240 is equal to 146 plus our missing mass number. So I'll use an M for that. So if I take 240 minus 146, I get that our mass number is 94. So 94 will be equal to our mass number, so that'll be the number I write up top. And then down on the bottom, I've got that 94 is equal to 58 uh, plus our missing atomic number, so I'll just call that A for atomic number. So if I take 94 minus 58, I get 36. So 36 is equal to our missing atomic number. So I'll put a 36 on the bottom. Now that I know that atomic number, I can go and look at the periodic table. And the element that has an atomic number of 36, according to the periodic table, is krypton. So that's our missing piece. Sometimes for these nuclear processes, they will just tell you the name of the process. And 
part of the name will tell you one of the particles, and it will also indicate whether that particle should be a reactant or a product. So for instance, if you see the term alpha decay or alpha emission, that means that the nucleus is splitting off an alpha particle, so an alpha particle will be a product of that reaction. If you see the phrase beta emission, it'll be the same deal. A beta particle will be a product. Another form that you might see is electron capture. And capture means that the electron will be a reactant. So let's look at um, a couple examples of this. The first one says that bismuth-214 undergoes beta decay. Okay, so let's get this set up. We'll have 214 bismuth, and I need to go look at the periodic table to find bismuth's atomic number, and that is 83. So bismuth undergoes beta decay. So that means that it's going to emit an electron. So we'll have a 0 minus 1 e for one of our products. Now to figure out the other product, the mass numbers on the product side have to add up to 214, because that's what we have on the left-hand side. I already have nothing, a zero. So all 214 have to be in our product, our missing product. And then for the atomic numbers, when I add up the atomic numbers on the right-hand side, they have to equal 83 from the left-hand side. Since I already have a minus one, that missing piece has to be an 84. 84 minus one gives me 83. When I look at the periodic table, the element with atomic number 84 is polonium. So there we have a balanced beta decay reaction. The next one says that plutonium-242 emits alpha radiation. So I'm going to start with a 242 Pu, and I need to go to the periodic table to find plutonium's atomic number, and that appears to be 94. So plutonium emits alpha radiation. So a 4,2-He will be one of my products. Um, the missing product has to supply the rest of the particles. So um, the, the, I'm sorry, the mass numbers have to add up to 242. So 242 minus 4 gives me 238. So our missing product has a mass number of 238. And then for the atomic number, 94 minus 2 gives us 92. And looking at the periodic table, the element with atomic number 92 is uranium. Our objective was to write a balanced equation for these nuclear processes. Hopefully, you're finding this a little bit easier than balancing chemical equations. We just want to make sure that the mass numbers add up and match between the reactant side and the product side, as well as the atomic numbers.